it's good and then kind of gets rough. <laughs> Welcome to the Backpack Ooh. Show, everyone. Well, we we discuss fecal matters. Oh and my sometimes gosh. other things. We don't. No, we don't. I sit here. Uh, <laughs> hey, let how, you say the things. How fast could you decide whether or not you want to date somebody? Ooh, me in like seconds, right? <laughs> Less than seconds. I would have had three whole minutes that you could probably really decide whether it or not you wanted to pick on minutes, China patterns. Two minutes, 2.99 minutes longer than I need. <laughs> I see. Two minutes to midnight is. I'm not thought. shallow. It's not based on money or anything. It'd be like, you know, no. some people just make it evident that they are not paying attention to you <laughs> like right away. Or so that it's actually, I've decided that you, you should get done with the whole left and right thumb and maybe watch people on a video for a little bit. You know, perv on them at a distance or something. I don't know. We'll Zach Schlein, founder of the Zach Filter Schlein. Off dating app. Filter Off. So which let's, is not let's, like those swipe apps. Just get that out of your mind. It's totally different. It's, We're going to find out how. Banish it. Backpack show. Say, See, Karen. all those people that went by, I was like, yes, I'd date them. Yes, I'd date them. No, I wouldn't. Yes, I would. <laughs> like, that's all it There you go. Filter up. You got it done. <laughs> yeah, like DJ, DJ Cumberbund. I was like, hell yes, Twisted I would Sister. date DJ Cumberbund. <laughs> right. JJ French from Twisted Sister, would you date him? Sure. I mean, he tells a good story. For sure. He's hey, fun. there's my dad. There's Carl. Your mom. My mom. My Coach Woodard. My dad's wife. Um. Hey, listen, if you were going to date all these people, you could start a video show about it on StreamYard. I could. Right. Get your own bendy duck. <laughs> so go to cbrogan.net slash StreamYard. You can make a show just like this one. So easy. Hey, you want to make a podcast? You could. An audio podcast goes really easy with peas. Uh, Castos.com. You're so funny. Peas in a podcast. Get it? It's, oh. Uh, okay. Is that Castos. why? Mm. Hey, want your own dot online do domain? Don't blame you me have, for that. You can have filter off dot online. Uh, <laughs> if you wanted for one whole dollar, just go to cbrogan.net slash online and put in the code Chris any way you want. No, and... no, it has to be all caps or it doesn't work. I don't know. Oh. What is this? But it gets you a Russia? sizable discount. So use the code with all caps and you can get that domain, that dot online domain for a year for less than a dollar. If you went to presearch.com and you looked up Zach Schlein, I bet you'd find him pretty easy. Uh, cast uh, presearch.com is a way to do the search engine while sticking it to the man because, you know, F Google. It's a search engine. I love their story. If you ha didn't see that episode of the Backpack Show, it's very interesting. But basically, a bunch of sites that had worked really hard to rank, like little local businesses, got wiped out because Google's like, nah, we want to promote our thing now. And so the founder was like, hell no, I'm going to start my own search engine. And that's free search. So go check that out. It's actually a very fine search engine. Like the technology is very good. That's a kind of cool thing with crypto too. Oh. So we got this pal. Good team. Me in high school. Absolutely any girl. You want to go with me to the me? Yes. <laughs> nice. That's nice. so funny. That's so sweet. Hey, we have uh, we're a visitor from Greece today too. Tecani schools, yeah. You know, I so, went to incredible lengths to not reject guys, but also to not acknowledge that they even asked me because I didn't want them to feel bad. Like when I was, oh. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, well, no, I'm late for something. Let's ask that <laughs> question. Hey, Zach, do you think if someone rejects you on video, it's less stingy than in person? Mm. It's a hard question. I would say the answer is it's not as difficult on video, um, especially if you have – chatted with a number of people at a given evening but do you, you gotta wait the three minutes though right like i couldn't just gotta wait like, three minutes <laughs> i mean it, okay. i guess all i'm saying is if you have something a little bit more intimate and then they reject you on video right. um you've known them for a little bit of time it'll still sting uh regardless uh, i see i see um, That's why it's I feel actually like I should just next them right away. <laughs> why filter <laughs> off? Does that mean I can't put a dog face on my face or I can't do those big cow eyes or something like that? But why filter off? Uh, precisely. Uh, oh. We want you to no filter. Just be your authentic self when you are video speed dating on our app. 
So why? What, I mean, what made you think, you know what we need is another dating app? Because people would tell you they're on all of them, right? Like dozens. Of yeah. Things. The market's pretty uh, saturated for sure. But one thing that I noticed, uh, I was on all the dating apps. I used to run a, a dating blog called topromp.com just so I could like put some energy and uh, do some good for humanity. So reviewed all the dating apps. And what I quickly noticed was I would have hundreds of matches, uh, little results. Uh, if I did go on these dates, there are oftentimes bad first dates. So I started asking my dates beforehand to be open to just doing a quick video chat. And the ones that agreed, I was like, whoa, this is the best way to online date. Um, you saw if you had chemistry, you saw if you're actually attracted. There's no way to catfish. Uh, so saw this as an opportunity in the market and went for it. It would be a there's, pretty elaborate hoax to catfish on a filter off. On a live video, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's an interesting take on yours too, though, is that you can host a virtual event. So you could decide, I would like to host kind of a speed dating setup in my area or something. Is it an area? Like, do you regionally gate or how, do, what, how does that work? Yeah. So any community or creator can host their own uh, virtual speed dating event on filter off uh, totally for free. They could do a specific location, uh, so theoretically a specific city, and then we ask for the radius. Or you could theoretically do like countrywide as well. Oh my gosh, everybody, the countrywide, come to my dating thing. That'd be so much pressure. Like, come here to Nashville from Utah for three minute dates. Like, what if, this could be bad. It could be all kinds of bad, or it could be could great. Be great. Yeah. I know, but I'm a lawyer, so like my mind always goes to the worst possible scenario, which is exactly why I don't usually spend three whole minutes. That said, I can talk to anybody for quite a length of time, right? That's why I do shows and interview people because I like to learn about people, even if I'm not going to date them. So do you find that filter off is a good way to build community kind of generally as opposed to just strictly for dating? Yeah, I mean, it is a dating app. All of our like UI is... Uh, dating oriented. So I wouldn't use it if you are in a relationship, like a monogamous relationship whatsoever. But if you're looking to date, you can go on a bunch of video dates. Like our average user goes on one video date every day. So uh, you mentioned a monogamous relationship. Is there like a box you can check where you're like, my girlfriend's cool with this. I'm serious. Like here's her state. Here's her yeah, sign statement. You're ethically not monogamous. Is that an yeah. option on your site or no? So the answer in short is no, but however, we've seen uh, virtual speed dating events by communities uh, that offer that option. So you know by virtue of the fact that they attended that they're cool with it, basically. Yeah, and everyone knows that that event is, that's kind of the vibe of the community and that's okay. How do you, can anybody do an event or do you, is there any like screening that happens? Like, what if they're a creep? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, and they don't invite anybody else but, like, people they want to date. Yeah, it, it's pretty obvious to know when it's just someone who uh, is maybe perhaps a little lonely and just wants dates. I've seen some weird, weird uh, titles for events. But it's also very obvious when it's, like, actually a legitimate community um, and they actually want to bring their community together uh, to date. Exactly. Well, that Good. raises Any a question these? then. <laughs> it, it sounds to me like this is going to require a lot of manual uh, oversight, you know, to make sure that, it, you know, things don't go weird. You know, there's not suddenly a white supremacist dating or something like that on your platform. There seems to me there's a lot of ways someone can really muck with this by nature of just having an account. So when anyone creates an event, uh, it goes through a review process. Um, so it hasn't been a challenge. I think that's a good problem to have if you have 500 new events that get submitted a day. Um, it's, it's quite easy to just either A, have some sort of algorithm or just hire external talent uh, to review those events uh, quickly to see if they pass the sniff test. Zach, did you test this concept yourself? Did you go? Virtual speed dating? Yeah. I mean, now I'm single again, so I'm using the app. And um, nice. yeah, I built this. One That's of such the a flex. You're like, come to my event on my app. 
Yeah, I mean, that I one need. Of them, <laughs> that I need. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't share that I'm the founder. Like in my bio, I just say I'm a tech founder. Um, it's a missed I, opportunity, Zach. I don't, I want people to like me for me and not because I run the app and I don't want to bias it in any way. Um, I try to keep a little bit of my privacy as well. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's, People always want to under or learn uh, about why you started a dating app when you go on dates. It's always a topic for conversation or any sort of event when you tell them, oh, you run a dating app. And you well, don't you want to talk about it. <laughs> you're like, put me, you're you here put to me talk a whole about other, it. Jeez, God. I'm, over, I'm stepping on Fort Carey today. I think I better find that graphic. because. Oh, I was just observing that for someone who tired of just... talking about the dating app well <laughs> no you know what i thought of though as you were saying it though and you said now that i'm single again so at some point you had a person of more than a couple of dates in your world uh and you were running a dating app i mean that mm, might put a little friction in any kind of relationship wouldn't it running a dating app or is it no it's just like you know this is just my thing i do for work it has nothing to do with our relationship or whatever how does that work for you yeah i think it's First of all, it's a good question. I think when you're dating, or I could just speak for myself, when I'm dating anyone, that's it's something that I'll always bring up. Like, listen, uh, I need to make sure my product that I continue to use in an ethical way. So in my bio, I say I'm only doing this for testing. I need to make sure that like, hey, that there's no like insane bugs. Or if I do go on any of these chats, again, I will just, at that moment, I would say, hey, I'm the founder, just testing it. And I put that in my bio so people aren't surprised or like them lying to them. But uh, yeah, my partner would have to feel uh, comfortable. So there is obviously some trust involved in any sort of relationship. You're like, honey, I had to go. I had to see how the customer experience is <laughs> to ask them. And then she'll be like, why didn't you tell them you were the founder? And you're like, because that would bias it, obviously. It's better if I go and pretend and just say, hey, how's it going? How's the experience been? How you like your video dates, right? I mean, you get cleaner data that way. Zach, yeah. how do we, how do we, I mean, what's the difference between date one and date three on filter off? How do we know when we're supposed to walk away from the app? And isn't that sort of one of the weird things about dating apps anyway, is that, you know, the kind of goal is to get somebody off the platform. So what does that do for your business process? And also, how do you kind of socialize that in the usage of the app? Yeah, so just to unpack that, we definitely attract a much more intentional dater, someone who is actually looking to connect. Uh, so I'd say it leans a little bit more serious than like a swipe app like Tinder, for example. Uh, how our app works, we have these virtual speeding events, and then every day you get about 10, we call them daily picks, so curated matches. And if you both like each other, you coordinate time to video chat or the match expires. So everything on filter off ends in a video date. Um, again, they're a time video date. And if you both like one another, then you could then message or video call. Our hope is that eventually you take it offline. Um, in the case that uh, you start dating them and they turn naturally or get married, uh, that is actually something that I like because people always ask uh, someone in a relationship or had got married, how did you meet your significant other? And if they share, oh, from filter off, it just increases word of mouth. And for any sort of dating app, that is the most important thing by providing a great product. Do you have Zoom weddings? Like, hey, we met in filter off. We're going to have a Zoom We've wedding. had a lot of weddings. People send me photos of their weddings like, from around the world, a lot, a lot in uh, Brooklyn from our Jewish Syrian community, but we just had one in Australia last week. About two months ago, we had one in Lagos, um, so in Africa. So we've had weddings around the world. Coach Woodard asks, "Do dating apps have algorithms too? How does one work the algorithm?" Asking for a friend. <laughs> That's a video. You can't work the algorithm, Coach. Like you have to show up. They're gonna see you and like. They're going to see so we, you. Yeah, I mean, we match you based off your preferences. So, like, for example, um, in the virtual speeding events, when you do join the filter off app, and it's totally free to use, 
uh, we'll match you based off your deal breakers, whether that be ethnicity or religion. Uh, for your daily picks, those 10 that you get every day, we want to give you the most compatible uh, singles. Um, and then we recently released an article, my co-founder put it out, we do have a pretty advanced algorithm to detect scammers and what we do with our scammers, which really pisses our scammers off. And we're the only dating app that's uh, doing this uh, type of thing. What do you do with them? What do you do with the scammers, Zach? We put them in a separate dating pool. Uh, so our algorithm automatically detects them, put them in a separate dating pool with an army of bots. And the <laughs> bots speak with the scammers as if they're humans. And they really piss the scammers off. So the scammers <laughs> are not talking to any actual I mean, humans. I mean, just bots. Sorry. Wow. Uh, example, so they're like, but it's just about what the hey, we can X hear you, Christopher. Before. So it's like, hey, we're going to meet up at this hotel. I'm eating a cheeseburger at the bar right now. Why aren't you here? Like that. And then they'll go and there's nobody there. We actually recorded the conversations, Put uh, hired some actors, did some videos. So if you search like scammers filter off, you'll see that article. And it's laugh out loud funny. Chloe says that's amazing. Gosha says nice one. I love it. So you're like Pardon. trolling the trolls. Pardon me interrupting with those noises. I was actually just doing some research on uh, Gen Z mode. You have a light mode for the app, a dark mode. It is Gen Z mode. Would you like to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think it's interesting how people of all different ages like to use apps differently. Uh, we're now introducing Giphy's in your profile so you can kind of spruce it up uh they're called originals so you could add uh like an audio of you speaking like answering a prompt like cats or dogs or what's your aim screen name but then there's also like uh text prompts so answering the question via text but you could add like giphy backgrounds one thing we've noticed is gen z definitely likes a little bit more messy uh not as uniform so i think it's interesting when you run a, a company a tech company that serves all ages, 18 plus, uh, it caters differently to certain demographics. So I would say from a product design standpoint, that makes it quite difficult, um, but also quite fun. Mitch Jackson says, good morning from California. Because of COVID, my two adult kids are experts on these apps. My daughter creates content screenshots on Instagram where she deals with trolls, very funny content. They also all watch out for each other. So like community policing. Hi, Leslie. We'll talk about that after class, Leslie. <laughs> um, Zach, so is there a uh, is there an evolution in your mind for filter off? Does, is there an I want to get to this or I want to see this happen or, you know, I'm where I am now, but ooh, can't wait to be in the metaverse or whatever. What's what's another version of this for you? I mean, the metaverse, I would say, is years away. I think for us, and eventually it will happen, where you, right now, prior to the pandemic, uh, people didn't really use video whatsoever, maybe an occasional phone call. Um, now you've seen this like transition to video where over 65% of singles like to video date uh, prior to their first date. Uh, eventually, that will be the metaverse. I think there's challenges there from a tech perspective, because you have to have your actual realistic avatar or it just becomes another catfishing dating app. Um, but that's years away. Um, right now, our focus is just providing a really incredible product where people are actually going on video dates. That's all I care about is like, if you're going on, when you're using a typical swipe app, you may have potentially 400 matches. Um, and how many of those matches you've actually met in person or interacted with often comes very few if any uh with filter off our goal is that you're going on at least one video date every day and creating actual human connection so that's that's what like that's our north star just having you meet people and not profiles so playing the odds meet more people you're more likely to find people you're actually compatible with For what's sure. like what will get you banned <laughs> what will get you banned like as opposed banned. to put in the bot room, but like banned for life from filter off. Yeah. I mean, this rarely happens. I think people are on their best behavior when it's live video, like one, 
one-on-one -on -one video chat because it's tied to your phone number. People don't want to get banned. But on occasion, someone will upload a picture of their uh, genitalia and we have algorithms in place that will automatically detect it and kick them off the app. So I just don't understand why they do that because they can never use the app again because it's literally tied to their phone number. So they're just kind of silly. Um, and I have no idea why they think that will attract people. So that's <laughs> always been um, a question that I've just never really understood. And it's typically men would do that. Mitch wants to know, do you, does your app allow for reporting bad actors? Yeah, we have pretty robust reporting. So any matches you get on your daily picks, you can report any of them. If you see anything inappropriate after every video call, uh, you can report. So again, pretty robust reporting functionality. Um, but sometimes people love to report. They're like, I don't like this person. And I'm like, and we're just like, I don't understand why you're reporting them. On occasion, we'll have someone report like, five people and they're like pass pass it's like well, what are you doing um, <laughs> like do you reach out on bumble when you have a bad uh bad message yes, um, yes i don't like anyone and i want them to know <laughs> I, I, I it's it's quite interesting um but yeah i mean but we suss out like bad actors quite quickly like using algorithms and using robust reporting functionality Mitch also says, came in late. What's different about his app? Um, two things, events, right? And video chats. Is that about the, like, is that the Reader's Digest version? <laughs> yeah, I would say uh, we're a video speed dating app and very focused on, like, these, like, community-based events. If you're in New York City, we also run in-person singles events um, once or twice a week uh, with different sorts of uh, communities. So we've thrown yacht parties. Uh, we actually have a 90s party coming up. So it's these like theme-based events. Yacht parties. Chloe says, that would definitely make me show up real. No way I'd be putting on makeup and date clothes every day. <laughs> it's not date clothes, Chloe. It's like a date shirt. And you could keep the same one, just like. Yeah, you can Winnie, Winnie the Pooh this stuff. It's three Winnie minutes. <laughs> Leslie says, sounds like some of my middle school students, <laughs> like the people who get banned. And Coach Woodard says, I don't like anyone. I wonder why I haven't got any dates. Hey, I've never said that. First of all, I get dates. It doesn't matter. I don't like anybody. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, one thought I was having as you were explaining that, though, about the people pressing no one and all that. I wonder if because it's video, people get a slightly longer opportunity to make an impression because I take people's written word. If you use the wrong your or something like that, or if you can't spell for beans, or if you're like a, a, the letter U instead of Y-O-U, the two extra amazing characters it takes to spell a word, um, like you're already out of my, my mindset. So I, I think video is almost a little kinder to people in some ways. Yeah, I definitely, we've definitely seen that when you interact on filter off, it's less about a swipe right or swipe left where it's like, I want to match this person. Our user experience is I'm interested in video dating this person. So people are actually a lot kinder where the match rate is quite high because people just want to see, do I vibe with this person? Am I attracted on video? And such a low commitment of three minutes. And our video speed dates, you could literally get 10 dates back to back. So it's a very little commitment for lots of singles to meet. Uh, so yeah, I definitely see that people are kinder um, for at least having the initial match. What's, oh. a, what's a no-go for you, Zach? I mean, you're single now, so you got three minutes. What's going to make you punch out mentally after like a minute and a half? I would say when it comes down to any sort of video date, um, are you like sometimes camera angle? Sometimes I don't understand how people still have difficult times with camera angles in this day and age after uh, being, after going through this pandemic. But like, yeah, it's super close. Um, I mean, their voice, uh, their laugh. Uh, That's it's tough. just, I think for me, it's also attraction. I mean, one thing that we've continued to note is like attraction is still so key um, for the majority of singles when it, when it comes to the initial like. I think if you want to have then an extensive 
uh, relationship afterwards or interaction afterwards, it comes to more compatibility and values. Um, but oftentimes traction is kind of uh, a primary uh, factor uh, when saying a like on a after a video date. What's tricky about that, though, is um, some of it's chemical, you know, and you can't gauge that always on video. Like you get to a certain extent, you can get personality and even values if the video call lasts longer than three minutes, probably eventually. But there's some you could still meet somebody and be like, they, you know, they smell like my brother or something. <laughs> so does that happen at events where you're like on video, you thought this was going great. And then, you know, in person, it's just not there. The answer in short is it could. I always tell people who are on the fence who are like, oh, video, like, why do I want to do that? It's like, do you want to meet them at a bar and spend minimum an hour with someone you definitely don't like? And if you just hopped on a three minute call, you would have seen if you had any sort of chemistry. I think it just it does definitely decrease the number of bad first dates you go on. Is it foolproof? The answer is no. But could it lead to a lot greater success than the current ways of how you're dating? The answer in short is 100% yes. What makes for a great event? Like you're taking people from like just video to in person. How do you help them make the transition? What makes a great virtual speed dating event? So it's definitely our community-based events. We have like large Catholic organizations who run events. We've had Jewish organizations who run events. So it's usually these communities that host these private virtual speeding events and the, the answer in chart is the number of matches uh so these private events typically see a, a ton of matches and the answer or the reason for that is there's this feeling of trust um that they're part of this community and when you have trust what we've seen in the data is the likelihood of connection, which would lead to more matches than if you just throw a bunch of people from a specific city together, for example. Well, the company I work at right now, we have acquired over 20 companies in the last two years. So I think about this question a lot. Who buys you? Or do you just push it out until you're the next Mark Zuckerberg with a weird avatar? Yeah, for us, I mean, we're, we're shooting to be the largest uh, dating app in the world. I mean, right now we're hyper focused on New York City when it comes to in person events and all of our paid marketing. We recently raised in October, in end of October, we raised two and a half million. So right now it's just like this hyper focus on New York City, blowing up New York City. I mean, we are now one of the top uh, trending dating apps in New York City. Um, and then we'll go to LA next. Um, but we do have quite a big virtual population in our urban centers around the globe, actually. So um, yeah, we're just shooting to be the largest dating app in the world. We have a comment that, see, you should host a scammers community event. That would be just desserts. <laughs> they wouldn't come though, right? They wouldn't come. They wouldn't go on video. It's, it's, uh, that's the thing. Like, you can easily detect them when they join the app, but they won't join a video event because they are scammers. Scammers, typically what they try to do, um, they try to target older individuals, oftentimes women um, between the ages of 50 and 75. And they try to get them off the app uh, with the goal that they can exchange personal information like a WhatsApp and then try to have them get like a gift card on Amazon, get them purchase a gift card on Amazon or something else. Um, I mean, I don't know if people have seen like movies like uh, Tinder Swindler, um, but like it's a very real thing and they typically target, um, yeah, just, just that sort of crowd. Gold diggers. <laughs> yeah, I gold, guess for Tinder Swindler's case diggers? it's more. It's a little, a little different demographic, but yeah. Well, right. I was going to say, that's not the same thing at all. This is like your no. Nigerian princess. Yeah. But um, all right. So Mitch Jackson has a question, which I'm pretty sure I know your answer is going to be. But, you know, a lot of Gen Y and Gen Z people are jumping on video only after they've done some text and whatnot because they're not, you know, they're not feeling confident that that's the first, you know, push in the in the rungs. Is there a text only option? so people don't have to do video and what's the pros and cons of that concept? Yeah. So for the virtual events, it, it brings you to video first 
for like the daily picks that you get every day. Once you are matched, you can coordinate a time to video chat. Uh, so you can text with them, but the beauty is it expires after a week. Uh, so we just don't want you to hoard matches. We want you to actually go on video dates. Uh, so what we've seen is when you can coordinate and kind of uh, chat with them briefly, maybe for about a day, then the likelihood of going on a video date is uh, quite high. So it's part of the mix. Like it's part of the process. There's your uh, answer, cool. Mitch. There you go, Mitch. Well, we've come to this part of the show. Oh, and here's our person of the day. Kaboom! I think it has to be, Mitch, just by the volume of his questions. It's almost like he's <laughs> California's leading trial attorney. Um, <laughs> I think those are some really great questions. Mr. Jackson, thanks for being here. Uh, one quick comment from Leslie. Our local police department ran a scam against scammers quite a few years ago where they told them that they'd won fabulous prizes that they just needed to show up and pick up at a particular address. And it was amazing how many people showed up for it. Yeah, we've used that approach a lot to like serve warrants and stuff. Like lawyers will do that. Nice. Come get your TV. Here's well, Zach Schlein, filter off. We have a question that we've asked every single guest who's been on here. Everything went from Sister Ann Flanagan to DJ Cumberbund. We asked the question, what goes in your backpack? Could be something physical. Could be something metaphorical. Carrie, what's something physical you could throw in a backpack? Ooh, extra set of teeth. That was DJ Cumberbund who, based on that two-second opener, I would date. That's right. <laughs> How about something metaphorical you could add to a backpack? I don't mm. know. <sighs> Kindness. That was mm. Ariel Helvetica, burlesque performer. Who I would date if I was into girls. Mm. Zach Schlein, what do you got? What would you add to the backpack? Yeah, so I have some interesting supplements that I bring to my work. It's uh, skin and nails and whole package. Um, I'm very into health and nutrition. Um, so those, it's like high quality supplements aside from my laptop, but um, I want to be peak performance. Wow. That is a new answer. I like that. You're committed. Yeah. You're committed to looking good on, on video. Yes. And have really nice skin and nails. Uh, Chloe says, super great that you created Filter Off Zach. It was great learning much more about it. Um, you know, I was thinking about if they had this kind of a dating app when my grandparents were dating that my Grammy down at the mill. You know, she'd take a little break. She'd uh, get on video camera. It would take like weeks to get the whole thing processed. But, you know. <laughs>